I think we are live. Oh, fantastic. Welcome in everybody to our final interview of this amazing week. And tonight we have someone so special and dear to me. This is my friend Shrum, and he is coming to us from North India. He's got the most incredible home, incredible story, and incredible gems, minerals, and jewelry. And so I am very excited to introduce you to this man who is one of my favorites. I told everyone this story, Shrum, last year in Tucson, or maybe it was two years ago, um, I bought this sapphire ring with you, and I bought it for myself, which I don't often do in Tucson. And I bought it because I wanted to carry a little of your energy <laughs> home with me. Um, so with that, I introduce you to a dear beloved soul. Thank you, Shram, for being here. Welcome, Nathanaji. It's an absolute <laughs> pleasure waking up here in India. And first thing in the morning, I'm able to speak with uh, one of the most important healers and channels that I will know. So this was just amazing, amazing. It's amazing making your contact and knowing all that you do. And uh, it's just wonderful to be able to meet somebody who loves stones that much. Well, thank you so much. Um, and it's mutual, yes. So I, um, here we are in my, um, it's my bedroom, but at the same time, <laughs> it's the room where I keep all my crystals and uh, new finds. I can't let them be away from me. It's also my studio. Mm -hmm. And some really, really fun stuff that I have just been able to collect. Uh, this is my recent, and this looks like an abstract painting to me. <laughs> or a face. I see it's a face the, there. Yeah. Yeah. It's actual Mudin in Aqua. And then is this pirate bandana thing. It's like smoky quartz in Aquamarine. Wow. Oh, it's beautiful. Well, welcome everybody. I hope you're excited. We are just getting started in this hour with Shram this morning. It's very early morning right now in India. What time is it, Shram? Uh, it's uh, seven in the morning. You can <laughs> see the sunrise. <sighs> and here we are at the studio. And that's the banyan tree. Yeah. That's a bonzoi. I, I grew it when I was uh, 10 years old. And then recently, <laughs> last year, I put it in the art and it is just start up wow isn't that beautiful you guys to be with him waking up in india this morning what a pleasure uh, and that across the road is a sixth century shiva temple yes incredible and you live i mean basically where you live is on temple grounds well, it's a little separated, but most of the land around me is of the temple. Yeah. Hmm. But it's really sacred energy. Uh, I grew up here in Aravlis. Maybe I can show you the mountains like yeah. there. Uh. So when I was like really, really young, it was all the boys. Like my dad was into mining. So we would go and collect uh, pyrite, <laughs> rocks with pyrite on it. And yeah. And, and then also limestone, because limestone will have these characters. Uh, maybe I can show you. Is it okay if I move the camera? Yeah, let's go for it. Let's see what happens. <laughs> oh. uh, Shram, while you're moving, one of my uh, friends who's with us wants to know what the name of the temple is, if you'd be willing to share it. Yes, it's uh, Neel Kant Mahadev. Neel means blue. Mm -hmm. Gunt means uh, the, the Adam's apple, mm -hmm. and Mahadev is the name of Shiva. Yeah. It is the story of Shiva when he uh, drank the poison, and from there he got the name Neel Gunt. Oh, interesting. Yeah, like blue throat. Sure. Interesting. So he, here is a little limestone rock. Uh -huh. <laughs> Look. We would collect little ones of them, but then my passion into rocks grew so much that collect all kinds like this is all my work in slate Ooh. and here is a beautiful tourmaline crystal that I have installed at the entrance wow maybe this needs to come to sage goddess someday uh, or I need to come to you <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah that's, that's even that better is yeah. that is true 
That is absolutely, yeah, you have to visit the mm. pistol here then. Wow, it's incredible, Shram. And here is the temple. Yeah. Would you like to go inside the temple? Can we? That would be amazing. Oh, okay. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, isn't this a treat, you guys? Wow. Beautiful. Oh yeah. <laughs> now you stay in the picture. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? Mm. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. And in the back is the mother goddess. Yeah. Shakti. Shakti, that's right. Mm. You didn't know you were going to see Shakti this morning, did you, everybody? This is exciting. <laughs> Not every day. That's right. Wow. And so right there is also my atelier. This is where I have my uh, 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 the staff come and we work together on cutting and polishing the gemstones. Yeah. Um, my jewelry is in another village, which will God willing to go some other day. Yeah. Wow, this is so sacred and beautiful. Look at the carvings into the wall and ah, oh, feels like you're there, doesn't it, everybody? Wow. Wow. And I can show you some of the sculptures I'm getting ready for the Tucson. Mm -hmm. Here is this. Yeah. Smoky quartz, felt bar. Beautiful. And actually, I have some, like, this is classified material right now. Mm. We are still trying to identify a lot of uh, what's going on in this. So I'll have details in about a week. Oh, wow. But then we have some amazing. <laughs> I think black tourmalines are absolutely fantastic. Yeah, me too. It's one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I surround myself with so many of them. So this is a selection I'm taking out for the Tucson show this year. Oh, fantastic. Yep. And, uh, Do you ever get pieces the size, you know, the rings you've made me in, um, in tourmaline and epidote? Do you ever get black tourmalines that size? We could do a collection and tourmaline would be beautiful. Absolutely, absolutely. Once in a while I could. Uh, I look for the double terminated mm -hmm. heads for that. Yeah. But uh, absolutely we could. It would be beautiful, wouldn't it, you guys? Mm. I know. Yeah, we have that. Everybody's loving it, Shram. Just keep going. Whatever you show us, we're just here to see it. <laughs> it's so amazing. That's lovely. Yeah. That's lovely. That's lovely. Yeah. And I'll take you more. Over I, here. This I'm is watching with you guys. Beautiful black tourmaline. I can't let go of this ever. No, that one is this special. Been, it's been in my company for so long. And once in a while, you get such fun things happen in nature. <laughs> like I found this smoky quartz. And this black tourmaline is making a perfect heart in it. Oh, it sure is. Look at that. That's beautiful. That's a very, yeah, it's a protected heart. Yeah. And then sometimes comes the question mark. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. I like that. Yep. Uh -huh. That's also black to rule in aqua. That's very cool. Yeah, you know, for us, we don't see a lot of black tourmaline in aquamarine. It's not common. And so it's interesting that you're finding it there. It's because it's, it's very unique to us. It's a, yeah, it's absolutely rare. Uh, this particular collection I've been collecting for almost seven years. This is the first time I would be presenting it to people. Wow. Wow. Yeah, yeah this has never, I don't think anybody has ever seen any of this material. Wow. 
I feel so lucky to see it. Yeah, I, I, there's so many details. Uh, I don't want to bore people right now in the live interview, but there are so many amazing uh, details I want to share with you. Yeah, Shram and I are talking about some of this material maybe coming to Sage Goddess, which I would love. Just hold on one second. Yeah, um, ask, you can ask your questions as we're going, and then when we get to a spot, I'm happy to ask for you. So, because I want to know what his favorite crystal is too. That's cool. Yeah, um, it, Sharon, they're talking about how you sleep with all that energy. <laughs> yeah, it's in that, you know. Right? Well, I guess being, yeah, well, being single helps. <laughs> <laughs> he's single, you guys. Did you hear it? He's, he's, you said it <laughs> first, yeah. Uh, you may not be single for long uh, after this. <laughs> oh, it's so great. Um, they're asking too, Shram, what's your favorite crystal? Uh, apart from black tourmaline, it's ruby. What, I, what was that? Black tourmaline? And ruby crystals. Aquamarine and ruby crystals. Ruby. Yeah. Star ruby. Oh, ruby crystals, yeah. Yeah, so my first would be black tourmaline, second would be huh. ruby, then aquamarine. Yeah. Most of these, uh, I go and harvest myself. So I go to South India and ruby is incredible how it is found. Mm. Would you like to know a little bit? Please show us, yes. So uh, these are like uh, mango fields there mm -hmm. with ancient, ancient mango trees, like 100-year-old mango trees. And the roots are always turning the soil. Mm -hmm. you are, there's no legal mining there. So in the rainy season, the uh, water washes the land. And then you go around the roots and stuff and you look for these heavy rocks and sometimes you find a little of this thing popping out of the earth like that and then you just pluck them out and sometimes you're lucky and you find some beautiful ones. So you're finding them in the roots of the mango tree? It, like mango orchards you can call them. Wow, yes. I had no idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, oh. so this I harvest myself. This is something I would wow. be speak with you soon. Mm -hmm. um, this is something incredible. Again, without having all the details, I don't want to start guessing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Once you like once you know, week, we'll talk more about how this. Yeah. Know. I'm very um, curious one about of these it. sculptures that I was building yesterday. Mm. It's again a black tourmaline. Isn't that cool, you guys? So this is unfinished right now, but I'm working on it. Oh, it's beautiful. I love the mosaic. Maybe working. I can take you guys to my terrace and you can get a view of the mining areas around. Yeah. So where I am to the, I'm in Udaipur, Rajasthan. Yep. To the north of me is all the barrel belts where you find uh, aquamarines and stuff like that. Mm. And... Towards my west is where you find like more appetites and amethyst and boxes like that. Yeah. Your view is so incredibly beautiful. I wish I was Thank there. You. Thank yeah. And yeah. it's a, it's amazing. What you, visit someday. you must feel, I would love to come visit you. Of course I will come and visit you. And I, you know, you must feel like you know those mountains so well because you grew up there. I mean, as a child playing there and you must just know everything about the area. Uh, a little bit. And then there are a lot of my friends who are in the mining mm -hmm. business of, yeah. of quartz and stuff. So they always know that I'm looking for a particular mm -hmm. vein or something unusual comes. They call me. Now, uh, they're not interested in what I'm interested in. Then I go there. I have like a team of people. We harvest them together. That's so nice. they know how I need to take them out. Yeah, for sure. For sure. One of the uh, questions people are asking is, what what are the stones that can be found in India? There's a lot. <laughs> oh, my God. India has a lot. Yeah. But uh, to start with, I would say aquamarine from South India, Kurur is gem quality. Um then we have uh, star ruby, alexandrite, we have uh, moonstone, mm -hmm. garnets, 
a little bit of sapphires as well. Mm -hmm. uh, the list goes on, tourmalines. Yeah. Then if you go into the north, and uh, then you have the Kashmir sapphires mm -hmm. and the Kashmir ruby. Yeah. Like the most incredible, incredible crystals in the world. Yeah. Yeah, India is rich with crystals. There's no doubt about it. <laughs> and, uh, and they have, uh, uh, like, their families have been doing craftsmanship for years, and they know how to, like, uh, treat a particular crystal. Like, people who uh, do emeralds cannot do ruby, and people who do ruby cannot do emeralds. Oh, interesting. Interesting. So it's very specialized. They, like, yeah. They have all these family secrets of... Um, polishing and shaping and they make certain tools and they, they, yeah, yeah I mean, you get into so much detail you get into the gemstone cutting oh, I can't even imagine yeah 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 um, one of the things I would love for you to talk about tonight too is um, is jewelry making and how you how you really became an artist because more than even just finding the stones and sourcing the stones and cutting the stones is the incredible jewelry that you make um, well, I, uh, I studied with GIA in 2001, and then I got into the gemstones. My people who would be supplying me the products were established jewelers. Mm -hmm. And I was always passionate about being with the tribals. Mm -hmm. So we came up with an arrangement where I wanted to uh, train these tribal young youth into lapidary and gem arts, mm -hmm. uh, and lapidary and jewelry arts. They don't have any other way like most of the work they can get is uh, like construction work or yeah. menial labor. So, and then they don't have a lot of education background. Mm -hmm. So what I felt was art is a great medium for us to incorporate the tribal community yeah. and not everybody there can do the hard work. So I was able to find enough of talent and that became my main motivation. At the same time, I went to, uh, um, like I, I, I went to Rhode Island School of Design for a little bit for a semester to study abstract painting. Mm -hmm. Then I went to Worcester Craft Council and learned jewelry making. Oh, wow. uh, basically associated with uh, David Walter. He used to work for Schlumberger. Mm -hmm. And uh, incredible jeweler, my guru, I would say. And we wow. spent three years together traveling and training artisans. Uh, mm -hmm. He was doing a project in Jefferson. One thing led to another, and I yeah. learned a lot about jewelry making. Wow. And event, at, uh, at one point, I had a fine jewelry showroom as well. Wow. Later on, the earthiness is what called me, and I got more into gemstones. And I do some very select jewelry. I think, Athena, you're the only one, uh, <laughs> apart from one of my um, sister in law, that I make jewelry at the moment. I sort well, of, we are so I'm lucky. <laughs> There's nothing like it. I love that you do that for me. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. yeah. Um, so you guys are welcome to keep asking questions. They're they're saying they want to get a get a group together and come and visit you. <laughs> I think I think I think Athena that'll be great. But you have to you have to come away. Oh, I will come that'll with them. The, oh, yeah. that be the way to go. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Um, yeah. One of the one of the questions or comment that's coming in is it's such a process from earth to harvest to the market. And so, how would you recommend for a buyer? to be sure that they're following or supporting the best practices? Incredible question. And I would mm -hmm. say uh, back in the day, back in uh, early 2002, I discovered a company, I think its name is Columbia Gem House yeah. or something like that. And uh, I was able to read their ethical practices and all that. That's what inspired me to do what I'm doing now. Before that, I used to just trade, buy rust from wherever and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But it opened my eyes to a new way of doing things where you know the mine owner you're like involved in the process so basically it is the integrity of of the of me and, and then you know like this developing trust where where you're able to see what's going on yeah. uh, some large corporations cannot uh, cannot handle that for so i think remaining small like the way i do it is it's just small things at a time yeah and that way I have, I mean, we, we, I have like documentation of everything. We yeah. know what we're doing and we are just pretty much harvesting things from regular mining operations. So we are not like there, like blowing up things for a precious thing yeah. or the community is not there, like dependent on a precious thing. It's just once in a while you find a pocket in a scientific way, we mm -hmm. take it out 
and that's one way to go for it. And then I usually deal with, like, as I told you about star rubies, the way they come out, these uh, village women go around, collect them in buckets. And so, so th these are like nice ways of harvesting, I think. So if there is a sustainable way to get your product and the people, more people are aware of it, that will be incredible. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's true. And and some, so sometimes when you get something that's hand harvested, it might be more expensive, for example, but you're also supporting a different way of, you know, and, and it's always good. I think, I think it's good to ask about, uh, for a consumer to ask about their crystals, you know, and, and you have, exactly. it's, it's good to ask. Exactly. And it's not always known. I mean, it's nice when I, when I work with you, it's like, I know exactly where the stones are coming from because I know from you, but it's sometimes you don't have the benefit of that wisdom, but it's always good to ask. And I love that you guys are asking too. Um, they're also asking what, so your, so we talked about your favorites already. What is your favorite stone to work with in jewelry design, or is it the same? My favorite stone is Paraiba Turmeric, if you really ask me. Yeah, but even no, in jewelry? I cannot get them. Even in jewelry, or just as in any form? Now, Paraibas I have used mm. in my life to make some nice couture collections, so it's an incredible color. I like yeah. that color a lot. Um, Besides, I mean, that color I can also sometimes find in turquoise. Yeah. Um, it's, it's just whatever stone will inspire me. I mean, I work, but these mm -hmm. days I, I'm only inspired by like organic looking yeah. uh, crystals to begin with. And then I'm adorning them with little precious stones. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's, it's different times of life. Different things have attracted me. Yeah. If you ever find a good Pariva tourmaline, I hope you'll call me. <laughs> I would like to see that. I don't think I've only yeah. seen them. I've only seen them, you know, in like a case. I've never actually held one in my hand. Yeah. So one one no, day. I, I, I was lucky to last year get a, get a small parcel and uh. cut it. I was a little nervous, but it was incredible. <laughs> and then somebody somebody got it off off of my hands. Yes. Oh, but yeah. Next time, God willing. So. Oh yeah. But yeah, more, yeah, most of them are now coming from Nigeria. Ah, interesting. Uh, but again, I have I have some some things going in, in that I'll I'll share with you at some point. Yeah, um, some people don't know what it is. How would you describe it? It's a very bright blue uh, tourmaline. How would you describe it? Yeah, it's it's basically just imagine turquoise but transparent, <laughs> like incredible, beautiful, sleeping pretty turquoise but completely transparent, and with a lot of light. So much light. They're so beautiful. Yeah. Um, yeah, so beautiful. <laughs> yeah, we. Um, um, I also like to work with mandarin garnets. Are one of my other favorites. Yeah. Uh, those are the orange ones. Yeah. And uh, well, and, but I, I love all, all <laughs> stones. Really, I, I love all the stones. Yeah, that's my problem. Just, right. Yeah. I mean, when you love them all. Yeah, like I, I, I mean. Oh, see, what, what happened was one. Uh, there was this astrophysicist in Boston, and he explained to me once we were talking about gemstones, and I was like more in like I always looked looked at them commercially. I did, didn't really know the value, and he explained to me that Shram, you have to understand one thing. At one point, Earth was just a void; there was nothing. And one by one, every mineral has come from some galaxy, some planet. So when you find a mineral in its pure form, it's representing. Uh, something that has come from so far and we are, we are all made of this one thing. So there's some, somehow that, that particular mineral is also part of us. And I was like, my eyes open, my mm -hmm. brain open to the entire <laughs> universe and yeah. how this is such an abundance and how these minerals and gemstones represent almost a galaxy billions of miles apart. Mm. So it made sense to me. Yeah, I, I love that. That story i mean it leaves me very speechless when you think about it like that <laughs> it's incredible no, it's just it's, it's true incredible to have this morning started with uh, one of the most respected healers that i have ever ever had this much opportunity to speak with oh thank so you Sean. sunrise in india sunrise in india look at that you guys oh yeah Aw, uh, isn't he incredible? Yeah, so he did say orange garnets, and um, India has uh, some of the most incredible garnets. We had some hessenite garnet on our website yesterday, Shram. Do you ever work with hessenite garnet? 
Yes, I do have a, I do often have parcels of that. It is an incredible stone to uh, cut. Yes, yeah. I do definitely. Yeah, it's very pretty. Don't you love it? Yep, yep, yep. Oh, this is so incredible, Shram. Look at the view, you guys. Isn't it magnificent? And it and it gives you a different perspective on um, where your stones are coming from. Look at that. Let's see. Um, someone has a question about ruby, Shram. Can I ask you while you're showing us? Sure. Uh, they're asking about the difference between star rubies and cashmere rubies. Uh, okay. So both of them are corundum, mm -hmm. and the ones that are from Kashmir are more transparent. So you're going for color, you're going for brightness and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. The ones that we are talking about, like these crystals, so if you cut the, the crystal upside, like from this direction down, chances are that you will find the star because of the silk, the, the denseness of the silk is, mm -hmm. is basically, just imagine this hexagon and now you take the hexagon into many, 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 many like layers and when you lay that down, those hexagons on microscopical le level, when they reflect light, it becomes a star ruby. Mm -hmm. The star rubies uh, sometimes are transparent, yeah. but mostly for for the Kash when we're talking Kashmir rubies, you're talking about the pigeon blood Burmi ruby look yeah. like mm -hmm. rubies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's. Um, I'm so glad you mentioned that because a lot of people ask me how the star forms in the star ruby. So it's basically the reflection of light off of the layers of the hexagons. Exactly. It's, it's just hmm. lots, lots and lots of these hexagons. I'll I'll show you. Let's bring some out. So. A lot of material that we can, uh, that is not pure gem quality, I'll show you here. So the raw, raw crystal looks like, uh, so the raw crystal looks like this. This, this is the C-axis of it, this yeah. right here. Yeah. If you cut it this way, there never will be a star. So you have to go down. So when you go down, this is how, mm -hmm. this is where you'll see the star. And a lot of times when you don't see the star, then we just leave the pencils and uh, then they, they can be used for massage wands and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, it's like, I would say, when you have a, like out of like say 100 kilos, you, you'll only find stocks in maybe 30 kilos. Wow. wow so 30% yes. of the crystals will have stars. Not every stone will have a star. So, I mean, and that's of just of the ones that are the rods, right? So people think every one of those has a star, but even those are not all stars. No, no, star, star rubies will become rare to have a perfect star because all these hexagons have to be layered mm -hmm. to create that perfect, fine, thin line star. Wow. Wow. So it's almost a miracle when it happens that everything lines up exactly correctly. Exactly, exactly. I think, uh, like, I, you know, star rubies are like my most favorite of the stones yeah. I have to work with, and I have enjoyed that energy so much. Um, it's a, it, it's like a natural phenomenon, and it's a, I, I love phenomena in stone. And like, cat's like isoberyl is good with two lines, but yeah. sometimes star rubies can also have 12 lines when the crystals, uh, Join like there are two crystals that are growing within a crystal, then you can have like 12 lines of star on it. Wow. And, and there are sometimes twins, so you'll find uh, like two oh, rubies it's like joined together and you'll have a twin star. Now those are rare, uh, rare, rare little um, uh, what you call inclusions and stuff and uh, wow. variations of stone. So I, I'm always looking for any of those kind of things. Okay, my mind is officially blown. I've never heard of a twin star ruby. I've never heard of a 12 point star. No way. I'll show you. I have that collection. Okay, I would love to this see that is, one day. Oh my yeah. God. It's unreal. Fascinating Thank stuff. You. Oh my God. Did you guys know any of this? This is so interesting. Um, Stephanie is asking, do you ever find citrine or amethyst? I think that the material you've been showing has some amethyst in it, right? Or no? Yeah. 
Yes, we do have some amethyst. No, we don't have a lot of citrine around here. Citrine is mostly in Brazil, in Africa. Yeah. We've had some at Sage Goddess from India, and it was really nice material, had some green tourmaline in it, but it's gone. I mean, we have very little, and there was just tum tumbled pieces, small spheres. I mean, not big pieces or anything. And now we can't get it anymore. Okay. They say it's gone. So. Yeah, yeah, uh, probably just, you know, like, uh, uh, just, just like the pocket we have just found. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, that way, like, in a mining area, somebody must have found some small pocket for sure. Yeah. And yeah. you said it had green tourmaline in it? It had green tourmaline. Yeah, I have a piece here. I'll take a picture tomorrow and show it to you. That's incredible. That's so I would love to see it. Yeah. It's Especially not great. It's not great quality. quality. You know what I mean? It's not super translucent like the Brazilian stuff. It's not like that. It's a little milky, but it's beautiful. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it's incredible to have tourmaline in it that itself is such a great phenomenon. Yeah, right? Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, so you guys do have amethyst sometimes, not much citrine. Um, where, When you have found amethyst, is it mostly in the north there, or do you also find it in the south? Amethyst is found uh, abundantly uh, pretty much uh, in the northwest as well as the south. Oh, interesting. The, okay. the south Indian one is actually of a really good gem quality as well. Yeah. The north Indian one... Well, there's two different colors. The South Indian will be deep purple. The North Indian will be more lilac. Uh, actually, I go for more lilac colors and the pinkish looking ones. Mm -hmm. But some people just prefer the the deep, deep purple ones. So those come from South India. Yeah, I tend to like the lighter ones too. I think so too. Yeah, I, and I, I like to really work with the with the ones that uh, you know. The, that is classified as aurolite, so yeah. I love where I can have amethyst with something else. So, uh -huh. I mean, if it's a plain gemstone, it doesn't attract me as much. Uh, yeah. And if it has a phenomena or some other mineral in it, is then then it just is a signature piece. It's like oh, yeah. a signature of the earth for a particular place. Oh yeah, no, it makes it much more interesting from the energetic perspective too. You know, when you've got these other minerals, then you have a, a super healing crystal for sure. Okay. Yeah. I have so much more to learn, Ethanaji, from you. So <laughs> this is thank you so much for sharing all your information. Oh uh, well, you too. Well, what what else are you, do you want to show us? Is there anything else that you have there that you'd like to share with us? Oh, um, let's again go for a walk. We all, we love going for a walk with you. I wish I could. Uh, I wish I could share a cup of chai with everybody. I know. And one of my one of my favorite stories. Do you remember the day when we all sat down together? We had we had our food and we were sort of eating standing up. And you you went inside and you came back out and you put a tapestry down for us to sit together and share some food together. Yeah, and that was really the start of our relationship. <laughs> yeah, that was two years back. True, 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 true. Yeah. So you see, I, I have crystals everywhere. Even in my kitchen, you have crystals, and. Uh, this is a small studio kitchen I have designed and I have used a tree box to do the paintings. I, I'm into a lot of natural pigments and stuff like that, that I consistently use. Yeah. And, and uh, it's beautiful. let's see, this is locked here. Uh, this is more of some sculpture I'm working mm -hmm. with. Here, I don't know if I can make it to India. I mean, Tucson this year. Yeah. And this one here is an amazing crystal I have just found. It yeah. is uh, epitote in quartz. Oh, look at that. Ooh. What are you going to do with that? Oh, uh, you have to give a lot of things talking soon. Okay, good. Yeah, I want to hear what you're thinking about. It's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So, are are you thinking so, about coming in uh, April, or or you don't think so? The show in April. Yeah, to Tucson. Oh, I, I'll definitely be coming to the show for sure. Hmm. This yeah. year, this year in April. I'm definitely planning. This year in April, they're, they're saying it's going to be in April, right? Yeah, they're saying April. Well, if you go, maybe I'll come out for a couple days. <laughs> if you're going to be there. Yeah. 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 But, I mean, yeah. 
And this year, it's been so great at Energy working with you. Aww. Like you, you have given work to our crowd right at the COVID time. It was just a miracle. Like all of a sudden, I get this email, mm -hmm. and all my like boys were just sitting down. There was like absolutely no activity going on. Everybody's in lockdown, and you're like Trump. Then you do this safari, and we got so such a confidence. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, it felt very. Um important didn't it i mean it for both of us i think and when you said yes and you yeah. you did it i mean it was like what maybe four or six weeks so fast and i i my it was the same thing for us because everything seemed so shut down and yet to be able to bring brand new beautiful designs to my to my community was a blessing so thank you so much oh there's your art look at how beautiful uh Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Oh, I love your studio. Ugh. I love how the walls are gray and then your art, which is so vibrant, provides all the color for the room. Hmm. This particular one is on a book, of, uh, well, a book cover. It says Shiva and Shakti. That's your Shiva and Shakti. Look at that. Wow, that is beautiful, Shram. Thank you. Yeah. Most of the my paintings are Shiva and Shakti. Like, he, even this one here, this is the story of uh, Ganges, mm -hmm. Ganga, yeah. when she was coming down and uh, Shiva caught her naughty in the hair. That's my piece. Wow. This is fantastic. And this is more treasures, more bags and bags of rocks. Oh, I just want to play with that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Most of my friends are like, show me you never come out to town. And I'm like, I can't leave my my babies here. <laughs> They're everywhere. You can see them spread everywhere. Oh, well, I only mean... I show what's going on. No, when you live there, you don't need to travel. You have everything. All of the beauty is right there with you. But then I miss Tucson and I miss, you know, like uh, making those connections. And yeah. that, that energy exchange, I think once a year is very important. The Tucson is the only place in the world that I, I come out to these days. Yeah, yeah. Now, I'd, and we will be so happy to see each other right after going through all of this stuff. It's going to be even more special when we can finally do it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. it's so true. Well, do you guys have any more questions for, for Shram this evening? I'm, again, I'm so thankful to you that you're willing to start your day with us. Um, it's so such a blessing. Um, it's, nice, it's nice and sunny and warm. I was asking him about the weather the other day. It's nice and sunny and warm in um, North India right now, I think, yeah? It's pretty all right. Uh... Uh, it's it's a little nippy. We had a little bit of a cold wave going, mm -hmm. so we got our share of that. So, and then I'm just gonna take you for a little bit more of a walk yeah. before we part away. Oh, if yeah. it's okay with you. Yeah, please, as much as you can show us, it's incredible. Okay. So this is a gangli tree. It is called uh, G A N G L I gangli. Gangli. Uh, this tree is probably 200 years old. It's very small, but uh, all the all the elders who live around here swear that they have not seen it change ever. And I'm very very blessed to have this tree as uh, one of the corners here. Uh, wow. This is a water project that uh, I've been doing for a while. Mm -hmm. Slowly and slowly, we raised some funds for this. So what happened was in summer, this tank had had no lid, and there was a squirrel that died in it. So people were drinking the water that was contaminated. Yeah. Um, so to make things okay, I collaborated with a friend in Albuquerque. And what we have done is we are making nice, clean. So we first protected the well itself so nothing goes in. Now we're going to be building uh, a water tank over there and then create a system where our, our excess water can then go into the woods. Nice. Now and I can take you to an actual 6th century temple. I don't know if we will be able to keep the connection, but uh, if it's okay, it's just two minutes away. Yeah, let's give it a try. Okay. 
So how many how many people or how many villages will will you be able to supply uh, fresh drinking water to, or are you supplying? So th this particular corner uh, of the land, basically all the shepherds come and, and then they wander around in the woods. So those are the people who need water. Yeah. So they will, I would say on a daily basis, 25, 30 people will be able to get water from here. Yeah. And then the village itself has 72 homes. Wow. That's amazing. And that's, did you tell me that's 200 acres? Uh, the, the back is 200 acres, yes. This this is a protected land. Yeah. It has uh, all this 6th century civilization. And um, I was very lucky. With, 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 uh, my father used to be working here years back, so that's how I ended up living here. Yeah. But nobody actually wants to come here. Nobody comes here because there's a lot of leopards in this. Oh, interesting. So, so what do you do about that? So, I mean, I think spiritually you just pray to them and just say, hey, don't come and damage us. Yeah. So here now we are going to a really, really old temple. This is 6th century. Oh, you guys, look at this. Whew. Amazing. You can feel the energy, Shram. I think we don't probably have volume with him while he's here. I'm not sure. Shran, can you hear me? But the, yes. the, you can hear me. Oh, good. The video, Shran, this is one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. <laughs> oh, my goodness. How often do people come to... Uh, how often do people come to this to this temple to take care of it, to wash the statues, to put the flowers? How often do they do that? I think just very, very few people, like one or two people come around here. We are in a very remote area. Hmm. Yeah, it's absolutely incredible. Yeah, you know, and one of the things I hope you guys are receiving as you're watching is when you, when you get stressed, when your world seems so stressful or your, your, you know, problem seems so big, it's important to remember how incredibly vast and beautiful this world is and that there are still untouched beauty in this world, you know, and let yourself kind of travel in your mind to this place and it transforms your energy. What, what are we looking at here, Shram? Is this just a different part of the temple? This is, a, this is another temple. Now okay. we have come to a Hanumanji temple. Oh. Look at that. Wow. Mm -hmm. hmm. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I can't read the wall, but I assume it's an invocation or a prayer to Hanuman, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's a prayer. Oh. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Oh, my goodness. Welcome. It's incredible. And, and this is just right down. I mean, you literally could walk out of your bedroom, and within two minutes, you're here. I mean, it's absolutely incredible. Yes, very blessed, very blessed. I think. But, you know, it, it comes with, like, you have to give something to gain something. <laughs> I don't have the comforts of the city. Yeah. I don't have a refrigerator and all that, and things are far away. But at the same time, it's just so peaceful and beautiful that I would not uh, give this for anything. <laughs> yeah, and, and I yeah, understand why. Mm -hmm. So here is the wheat crop right now. Mm. Look at this. And there is a farmer, he's taking care of his wheat crop. 
They used to protect it from monkeys all the time. <laughs> yeah, he showed me the monkeys. <laughs> oh my God. Oh. He's always there. He's, he comes here at four in the morning. <laughs> then he's standing here protecting his wheat. He'll take a break in the afternoon for like an hour and all the monkeys that jump into his field and then he's got, he runs around them. It's always every day. <laughs> so much fun. The monkeys then come to our villa and I just feed them whatever I have in the house. I mean, are they friendly? What? Oh no, they are so bad. <laughs> they, they've chopped all my hibiscus plants, like oh. everything gone. They oh, just no shoot way. them, but they're little, little babies. I can't say no to them. I know, they're cute. I'm trying to talk to them. I'm like, hey, don't damage my plants. I'll feed you. Yeah. I think <laughs> they understand better than a lot of human beings, I guess. Uh, you know what? I think they do. <laughs> See, the problem is if I lived there, I would want to have a monkey pet and a leopard pet. And I don't know that those are good pets. Yes, I can imagine a goddess would want at least two of those. <laughs> I would. I'd be so happy there with my leopards. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh my goodness. Wow. You know what? Uh, this was one of the most incredible experiences going around with you today. I, I'm just, I'm sure you guys feel the same way. I'm just it's speechless in a way. Because it's incredible. Seven sisters. Ah. They always move in the group of seven. Oh, there's seven sisters. <laughs> That's their family. Yeah. I like that. And, oh my gosh, it's fun climbing all these walls and stuff. I thought I'll be at one place. I was a bit nervous with that. <laughs> yeah, they were asking if you climbed the wall. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, this is the back of the villa. Oh, beautiful. You can see I love all kinds of stone. I collect all these old slate. Uh -huh. This is all hand taken out slate. These are some ancient ruins behind my house. Wow. Oh, look at that. Wow. What was that? Do you know? These are just uh, old ruins. Yeah. But I go in the morning to do some... Uh, I harvest, uh, go pick up feathers, but I find them on the floor. So every morning for half hour I do that. It's so meditative. Oh, I bet. Do you know what you're going to do with the slate? Uh, yes, I'm going to be making some sculptures, maybe some uh, like I want to make uh, stands uh -huh. like uh, in more tantric forms to yeah. keep gemstones on it. like. To play crystals. Yeah. Because it's easy to carve. This is one of the Ooh. latest edition of my picture. It's again a black tourmaline and mica and feldspar. Yeah, that's pretty. This I just harvest. Then I collect all these old architectural elements. Yeah, those are cool. You can sell that. You bring that yeah, to Tucson. Really, I'm <laughs> My dream is to one day make a booth with all this in Tucson. Yeah, you should. I mean, can you so, imagine? Because there, we don't have nothing like that here. We would want that in our homes and studios and all of that. It's incredible. Yeah. Mm. I'll send you more pictures and ideas. I, I, I've been, if you look, I mean, I also do um, architectural work. Yeah. And Slate is my, my signature. So one of the projects I've worked for nine years. Sorry about that. Hello? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Hello? Yes, yeah, sorry, there was a phone call that came. No, that's okay, don't worry. Yeah. yeah. And we'll, I guess I have to climb the wall again. <laughs> Let me go in. It's okay, it keeps you young. <laughs> He's climbing walls for you guys, I hope you know. <laughs> He's working hard for you right now. <laughs> you you have quite a few admirers here, I should tell you, who think you're very handsome. So I wanted to let you know that too. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Incredible. That's always nice, this right? Is really 
very good. Yeah, flattery is always good. Uh, um, yeah, someone wanted to know if you think that the crystals uh, help the trees grow. Maybe that's part of the secret is how much quartz and minerals is in the earth. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, so this, uh, this one new property I started working at, Ooh. we were digging and there was so much quartz in it. Wow. And there was a reason I was feeling such great energy there. Mm. Just hold, oh yeah. Wow. Sorry. No. I got distracted. My driver came and all that. <laughs> so, That's okay. Um, yeah, so I was feeling so good at this property. And then we started to realize that it is so such a such so much quartz mm. in there. So now I'm going to be building this house on a property with lots of quartz on the bottom. And I, I absolutely agree that uh, the minerals, especially abundance of quartz, mm. does help the trees become very happy and uh, healthy. Yeah, it has to, right? Yeah. Absolutely. I think so too. Well, I, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for this time. It was so special. You're so special to me. Um, and so I, I it was, uh, it was such an honor to bring you and I, I just, I knew it was going to be such an amazing conversation. It was even better than I thought it was going to be. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome. You're most welcome. And uh, I want to talk privately later. Thank you. We always talk privately. Yeah. And yeah. then to all of you, I want to thank our community too for being here um, this evening. I know it's Super Bowl here in the U.S. So they, but you know, I think this is better than the Super Bowl. My personal opinion. This is the Gemstone Super Bowl, right? So we have our own thing going on. <laughs> look, yeah. Look, look what I have done. The one, one more thing I want to show you. Yeah. You see that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What is it? I've taken two aquamarine crystals and put them on my door. Oh, that's awesome, Sharon. Look at that. It's a very emotionally healing space. Thank you. That is so cool. Look, they're the perfect hexagons, too. Yes. Yeah, look at that. Isn't that cool, you guys? <laughs> and, and right where I have my electrical there, yeah. I put lots of tourmaline. Well, that's good. I can show you that. Yeah, that's good. <clears throat> yeah, see, they're already up and going, you guys. His guys work early. They were wondering, is everybody working already? But you have your guys going in the morning, right? Early. 4.30. It's all a farming community here. Did you hear that? So uh, this is where I put, this is where the electricity comes in, mm -hmm. and I put a lot of film pulling in here. Yeah, that's good. That's so cool. It goes nicely with the rock. It looks right there. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it's perfect. Well, thank you. Have a beautiful rest of your day. Uh, truly, I'll talk to you maybe even later today, your time. And then everybody else, have a beautiful rest of your evening or wherever you are in the world. And we'll see you soon. Blessings to you. Namaste, Shram. We just adore Namaste. you. We'll see you soon. Take care, everybody.